Hello again, uh, welcome to Thermodynamics uh, module. We're on to lecture two. Uh, today we're going to be looking at work and heat transfer. Um, our last session we were looking at, well, we defined the system, a uh, collection of matter in a prescribed boundary. Uh, everything outside the system was the surroundings. Uh, and when we start our problems, our analysis in thermodynamics, the first thing we do is, is define our system. Uh, we then looked at some of the properties of the, of the system. Um, and our focus is really on thermodynamic properties. This is what we're interested in primarily in the course. And we could, our thermodynamic properties, we could break them into extensive properties that depend on the extent of the system, intensive that don't care about the extent, and specific, which are a subclass of uh, intensive, they don't care about the extent either, but you define them by taking your extensive property properties and dividing them by mass. Uh, we then define the state of the system. We imagine uh, that the state of a system was essentially defined once the, the properties are known. So once you specify the properties uh, and you know the values of the properties, that would give you a, a state point. Uh, and we, we introduce state diagrams of this idea of state space. Um, so these are all, uh, again, just all relating back to your system and, and how you can think about that system. Uh, we introduce the true property rule. And here I've got a little example of PV equals RT. This is the ideal gas law. And it essentially says, law P is a function of temperature and V here, I take the V to the other side, R is a constant. Um, and that's an example of the two property rule and just about all the uh, materials that we're going to be looking at uh, will satisfy the two property rule. Uh, generally, we're looking at pure substances uh, on the course, um, but uh, it's easily broken this rule, by the way, you know, if you get more complicated uh, compositions, um, the rule uh, doesn't all, so it is a rule. Um, and then we've got the, the Zerif law, we, uh, which uh, we found uh, um, um, by means of thermal equilibrium, we found that we could, we discovered the property temperature. Uh, this is a macroscopic way of defining temperature. We know temperature is essentially about microscopic things, uh, but uh, the way we approach thermodynamics, we want this subject to be independent of those types of definition uh, and we found that we could define temperature via using thermal equilibrium this concept of thermal equilibrium and you might recall that uh, i likened it to mechanical equilibrium equilibrium when we we were able to discover mass uh, and just the same idea um, we were able to discover the property temperature uh, where we defined the property that we found to be temperature uh, we we'll give it that name, um, and that was the, the Zerif law, which is a fairly easy law to understand. I don't think anyone will have much difficulty with that. Uh, so, what we're going to do today, well, today we're going to go on to and look at uh, work and heat. So let's uh, let's put that up. Now I'm going to start this uh, session in a slightly unusual way. I'm going to start by Write down the first law. You're not, we, um, we're going to get to the first law a bit in the next uh, session. Uh, but I think it's quite useful just to start there uh, and look at what we're going to be uh, considering uh, and where we're going to go to. So if I wrote down the first law, uh, we'll find it's like this. Uh, this is for a closed system. So, and or, we'll just I'll write it the other way as well, do you is equal to delta Q uh, plus delta W is the alternative view. It depends on the sign convention. We'll talk about the sign convention in a second. So this statement here is essentially what the first law is saying. Um, and what this is then, we, we, I introduced you already. That was energy uh, for, the, for your system. So this, this, this notation means uh, you can think about it as a, a small change. Uh, if you like an increment 
um, infinitesimally small. That's sort of kind of where we mathematicians don't like that kind of language. But from a physical point of view, we're thinking of a tiny change of energy of your system. And we've got two things on the right hand side here. Uh, one is a change, uh, uh, heat, a small increment of heat being supplied to the system, and one is uh, W, which is uh, an increment of work which has been applied to the system. So we're in a little diagram for this. What we're thinking here is that uh, in the U, the energy of the system, uh, is a property. We've not defined that yet. We're going to get on to that. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why I've got this. Uh, the D is a, a uh, you know, uh, usual D that we get in the Latin alphabet. Uh, and here we've got delta, which is a curly D, if you like, but slightly different. Uh, and the reason why I'm, I reserve this D is because U happens to be a property. Uh, so in, so what we have here is a change in the energy internal to the system. Uh, and we can imagine heat flowing into the system. We haven't defined what heat is yet, but essentially heat transfer is driven by temperature differences. And funny enough, we, we kind of saw it on the, the zeroth law, when we're looking at the zeroth law, when we're looking at our systems, and where we brought two systems together uh, in contact via a diathermal wall. Uh, if the properties were unequal in the system, at the beginning, so if the temperature, now we know temperature, if the temperature was unequal, then after a while, the temperatures equalize. So the, the system tends to equilibrium. Uh, we call that a thermal equilibrium. Uh, so we saw that, and what was happening, of course, is that heat transfer was happening. It was, heat was leaving one part, one system to enter, enter the other. Uh, uh, so this is the mechanism that's going on, and temperature difference is essentially what drives uh, heat transfer. Uh, so that is heat transfer. Uh, we can imagine a, a flame under your pan of, of, of uh, when you're boiling your eggs on the morning. Uh, the flame there is, is heat is coming into, into, into your system of water um, that uh, you could define and that's heat transfer and it's basically because the flame is at a higher temperature than the water uh, and of course then heat flows into the system. Uh, so that's a, a, an increment, a small uh, addition of heat into the system. Uh, this is work and the convention, uh, this minus sign is a bit unusual but um, no, well, not unusual. It's uh, uh, I always find it a bit odd. Uh, I tend to prefer the plus. But uh, basically, we define this this to be the work done by the system. Uh, so, and both of these things, work and heat, we'll find out that they're essentially transfers of energy of one form or another. So, this different types of thing. Uh, we're going to look at different types of work today um, and essentially we're going to spend a lot more time on the work and the heat uh, we're not going to do much about because um, quantifying the heat and relating it to temperature, uh, that's, a, that's another course that will come in your third year. So essentially we, we think of heat transfer, we just generally specify that we've got heat entering the system and don't say much more about it than that. Uh, so we're going to spend more time on the on the delta W there, uh, and of course the way the way I've drawn this diagram, I've drawn the arrows here to indicate positive uh, transfers, uh, and what we'd expect, of course, if heat enters the, our system, this is our system. Just make that clear. So if heat enters our system, then of course the energy we'd expect it, the energy to increase. I think that's what we'd uh, everything else uh, remained in the same. So and we can see that's what's going to happen. This is positive, then uh, this is going to increase. Uh, and the way we've got work, uh, because we're interested in work done by machines, so we can think of, um, you know, um, we, we, we can think of turbines and things like that, um, mortars and all the rest of it. Uh, we're interested in the work done by these machines. So this is the reason why for engineering, uh, we tend to, of the work as an energy transfer leaving the system to be uh, to, to be positive uh, but of course if energy is leaving the system then of course this 
this is going to go down, the, the energy inside the, the, the system must decrease according to uh, this rule here. And of course, this is the reason why I've got the minus sign. Uh, now, if I don't need the plus sign, then I'd have to reverse this arrow. Uh, and it then brings the delta W and delta Q. Um, it was just slightly easy to think about, to be honest, uh, to, um, uh, uni to sort of a unified approach. But the, the way we do it, and the way most textbooks do it, is you have this uh, minus sign. Uh, so we we focus on the work done by the system, uh, as I say, because we're interested in uh, we're interested in uh, what work we can get out of systems for, in engineering. So this is this is again this is the first law. We're going to get to it. I'm not uh, I'm starting now. We're going to focus today on this one primarily before we get to this thing. But I just wanted to do some slight nuances that. Um, that um, that uh, come about, and also just to emphasise why we've got this slightly different notation. And one of the things we're going to find is that uh, Q and W uh, are not properties. Uh, and the thing that we have on the left hand side here, peculiarly, you could argue, because these these are not properties. How, how do you end up with a property change? Uh, when we get to that, when we get to, uh, formally introduce the, the first law of, of thermodynamics. Uh, but we all we can think about we can quantify these things also in terms of um, changes with time. Now I mentioned uh, previously uh, we're generally interested in in equilibrium thermodynamics uh, uh, on on the start of the course, anyways, um, and uh, where and quasi-static processes uh, and those type of processes. Uh, look at movement between equilibrium points, and time doesn't come come into it, to be honest. Uh, but the reality of life uh, and the systems we face in the real world, time is a feature, uh, and you can bring time in very straightforwardly in uh, in in this by just saying, well, this increment here. What I mean by that du? Let's have a look at it. That du is the derivative of u respect to time multiplied by an increment of time, differential, the differential time. So we have du is equal to uh, the derivative u with respect to time. And that's just, uh, okay, that's kind of unifies things. We do exactly the same for delta q. So let's have a look at delta q. Delta q then there's our in, uh, an increment of heat. And here, um, I've got to be a little bit careful, and this is where the notation, why the notation is as it is. Uh, we don't think about differentiating Q here. We write this as Q dot. It's a rate. Now, this is a, just a nuance. And I'm, I'm, we're going to get to this in a bit more, uh, in a bit of uh, more detail. Uh, I could, rate uh, is, not, is not necessarily a derivative, okay? Uh, the reason I don't write it as a derivative is that um, uh, it turns out that Q is not a property uh, and therefore not a function that I can differentiate. Uh, and we're going to talk about that also. And similarly for DW, delta W then uh, is equal to W dot. And W dot, um, again, a rate and usually power. So we've got work. Uh, the rate of work is power, uh, so typically watts or something like that, they're the super units, uh, kilojoules per second or kilowatts uh, would be the units for that. Um, and in fact, because uh, remember that I did say that uh, energy was kilojoules, uh, if you've got an equation like this, wherever the units are, they're going to be the same, really. So I'm talking about energy here. So this is in kilojoules, kilojoules, kilojoules. Uh, but when I'm talking about rate, this is kilojoules per second, uh, or kilowatts. Um, uh, obviously, you multiply find that by d delta dt at time there, so that brings that back to energy. Uh, so there's, a, there's some subtleties in the notation that we adopt. Um, and it's to do with the fact that certain things are properties and certain things are not. And we want to get to, I'm sure, in fact, that work um, uh, today is not a property. 
uh, and we think of it as uh, as a means of transferring energy of a particular type. So we um, identify sort of two types of energy transfer. Uh, we're not talking about this is a this is a my system here is a is a closed system. I'm not thinking about mass here. We're going to get onto open systems where mass can flow through. Uh, so it's a closed system. I'm thinking about, but uh, but we will have exchanges uh, of um, of uh, energy possible between the system and its surroundings. Remember, the surroundings is everything else. So the surroundings is all the stuff outside uh, the system. And there's going to be, and as I say, the way we approach thermodynamics is by this definition of the system and looking at how it interacts with the surroundings. Uh, and it turns out, of course, uh, and you will get to it when we talk about the first law, uh, energy is essentially conserved. Uh, the universe, the energy in the universe is, is invariant, essentially. Uh, at, the, at the dawn of space and time, uh, the energy content then is assumed to be the same as it is now. Um, so uh, when we look at the old system plus the surroundings, nothing can pop change as far as energy is concerned. Uh, but we can transform energy from one form to another. Uh, and this is brings us in some very subtle input, very subtle concepts a bit later on uh, when we start to look at entropy in the second law. Uh, but certainly the, the, the amount of energy, the total energy remains the same. Uh, you might have different types, uh, that's all. Uh, and what's happening here, of course, is that we are, uh, as far as the system's concerned, the internal energy is concerned, uh, it doesn't really care if it gets heat or work, uh, it, as far as it's concerned. Um, the, the, when they're in there, they're both the same, uh, in a sense. Uh, so this is just a, a, a quick, uh, where we're headed, this is the, uh, the, first, uh, the first law of thermodynamics is where we're headed, where it's going to, for a closed system, it's, it's going to be given by this equation. Uh, but I'm going to focus on uh, terms on the right hand side of this equation today uh, before we get there. So there's some nuances we'll see that, um, uh, and this is this type of nuance, I've got to say, in a lot of the textbooks is not abided by, um, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. But uh, uh, some authors are not appreciating the slight uh, nuances that uh, that surround the surround this particular subject. So, the slightly different notation for a, an increment of energy is going to be used from increments of uh, heat and work. Um, and this is uh, uh, and this 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 minus one, as I said, is because we're going to focus on the work done by the system. Uh, and uh, and we define that to be positive where it indicates that uh, energy is leaving the system. So we have to take out the minus sign. Uh, of course, if this turns out to be negative, then energy would flow in the opposite direction and we'd expect this to increase. And this equation kind of tells you that's what's going on uh, in that case. So the, the first thing I want to do then uh, today is give a definition for work. So work, what's a good definition for work? Um, well, work, well, work is done by a system when the sole effect in the surroundings is the increase in increase in of a weight. In the gravitational field, uh, essentially. So what we're going to find is that, um, uh, as I said, 
the way we look at thermodynamics, we're kind of interested in the, the interaction between system and surroundings. Uh, and so a simple diagram might suffice if I got my system of, um, we can imagine my system of, uh, say, my, my pressure, my gas, there's my piston again, and, and my system here on the inside. Uh, and let's assume that for some reason, uh, the system is expanding, so the gas is expanding. Uh, something's causing that. That's my system. The gas is expanding there, and um, and the piston is moving along. So let's uh, and let's imagine then I can connect this piston to a rigid rod, and from this rod, we're hanging a mass uh, M. Uh, so what happens is, so this moves along in that direction, this moves, well it rotates, this moves in this direction, um, sorry, this moves uh, in the, that direction, lifts, that turns off, pivoting at these points, uh, and we end up lifting the weight rises in this direction. So we can imagine, we can always construct a device, if you like, to uh, to show that the system, when it's doing work, because the system's doing work, it's pushing back the pushing back the piston here um, by, by some means. We could, what's driving that? It could be something else. We might be heating this up. I don't know. We'll talk about that later on. <laughs> but in any ways, whatever happens, it is driving. It's got a pressure in there, and that pressure is a clear applying a force on the piston and what we've got then is um, the, the pivot, pivot mechanism here is rotating and it's lifting this, lifting this weight up. Uh, and what it's meant to show is this, it's, why is that imp an important thing to say? Remember the system, uh, the surroundings is everything else. The surroundings is everything else. Now, and what I'm imagining also here that my that my piston is frictionless. I don't want to worry about uh, issues with uh, additional forces coming in. Uh, and all my joints are all frictionless. Uh, so this is just an imaginary frictionless thing. Uh, the weight, this is the weight. Uh, so that whatever, whatever work is being done by this, uh, by this system here, uh, it's, it's only, the only effect it has is the sole effect, uh, which is that is in fact to increase the weight uh, in the in the in the surroundings. Now, looking at the surroundings, what we can what we can say is that uh, the surroundings have gained energy. That's for sure, and it's gained energy because it's we've got this. We can see this increase in weight, which we could use to do work with. You know, we could. So, the energy of the surroundings has certainly increased, uh, and uh, the system must therefore have lost. Well, it's lost energy in terms of work, that's for certain, in, in doing that. Um, and we can think of all kinds of cases. Uh, we can think of, uh, for instance, we can think of uh, a mass on a table, for instance, where we've got friction. We could have, we could have that, we could have a mass on the table, uh, and we've got our, our system boundary. And uh, our system boundary which is the mass, uh, and from that we can imagine that this is connected uh, to a pulley. Let's have a pulley, uh, and we've got a weight on this thing. Okay, and uh, we the weight goes down, uh, and the mass moves, and the mass moves along. Uh, now, in this case again. Uh, the work, well, the work done by the system is in fact negative in this case. Work is in fact being done on the system, as we can see, because the mass is lowering. So the surroundings here are lowering, uh, uh, losing energy. The energy is being lowered in, in the surroundings, uh, and it must be somehow find its way into into the mass. Uh, and of course, well, maybe not of course, but. Uh, 
Uh, clearly, there's something happening at the, at the system boundary here. Uh, it's got friction, uh, and there's another mechanism of energy transfer, which is heat, of course, which is, must be taking place there. Uh, so this is, a, this is, again, just showing that work uh, is being uh, done on this system of mass here uh, in, by it's a force here, of course, um, and it, mechanical way of thinking about work. Uh, we can analyse this in mechanics, of course, uh, but we, all I want to show you here is that essentially what's happening, the lifting and lowering of a weight is, uh, is, is uh, all these kind of problems can be thought of in that way. So showing that there is an energy transfer taking place between the, uh, the system uh, and the surroundings. Uh, another example might be um, uh, a, a propeller uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tub, where again we could imagine uh, uh, lowering the weight, so we could have a situation of uh, a bath of water, uh, and in here we could have a shaft, uh, if you like, uh, and we've got our, our propeller system, and we might have on this uh, a little pulley system, which where we hang a weight on. Uh, again, and this is, could go down and causing this thing to rotate. Uh, so, and this our system there, maybe a bath of water, um, maybe a bath of water or something like that. And what's happening in this case, uh, this is called shaft work as we call it. Uh, what's happening in this case? Is that uh, again? If the if the lowering of a weight in the surroundings, uh, the surroundings are losing energy. Uh, energy must be found its way into uh, into the system, uh, and we can guess what's happening to the water in there. Uh, if energy is being supplied, well, uh, we've just mentioned the, our law, uh, the first law, the internal energy. Uh, will increase, so the temperature will increase um, uh, by this by this particular process. So all work can be thought of in this way, uh, but by the uh, connecting uh, uh, frictionless devices to the to to uh, in some way to our system, uh, which has the effect of lowering or raising the weight in the surroundings. And the point is this: the key point is this. That uh, what is going on, of course, is the an energy transfer is taking place. So this is sort of saying basically what work is. Work is a, a form of energy transfer, uh, a particular form. It's like it's an ordered form to do work. You have to design things um, uh, to, to go, get things to move in uh, rectilinear motion or rotatory motion. So we have to. Uh, uh, so work is a particular type of transfer where we've got this sort of uh, uh, devices which allow particular types of motion uh, which we can exploit. Uh, so that's, that's a, a definition of, of work. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, while I'm on is the, um, this thing about uh, uh, equilibrium again. I want to mention uh, uh, this the, con the idea of thermodynamic equilibrium. So equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium. We've mentioned uh, mechanical equilibrium, uh, which we know about from our mechanics course, uh, but we'll also introduce thermal equilibrium. Uh, so thermodynamic equilibrium then is when you've got both of those things working. So thermodynamic equilibrium. Equilibrium is identically equal to mechanical equilibrium. 
plus thermal equilibrium. So we need both of these things for thermodynamic equilibrium. So, uh, and as I mentioned, this part of the course, we're going to be looking at changes in the system moving quite slowly. Practically, that's what it means. Uh, but uh, so time generally is not a feature of this, uh, of this. We just imagine that the system is moving. And when we did our diagram for the uh, state diagram, we have equilibrium points, um, which we can... Uh, so the system essentially moving a series of equilibrium points as it uh, as it uh, as it as it moves uh, uh, in that way. So that's uh, that is an idea. So it's a, essentially, uh, thermal, thermal equilibrium means constant temperature. Uh, mechanical equilibrium for the type of systems we are looking at essentially, uh, well, not constant temperature, uniform temperature in our system. So we have our system. Uh, let's do that again. Uh, so what we're imagining um, for our system here is uh, that the temperature is, is uniform throughout the system. So now we've got a, a nice temperature in there, T, which we now, so, and the temperature is uniform. No, all points of the system are the same temperature. And the other property we're interested in is P, P has a sort of mechanical aspect to it as well as a thermodynamic uh, because, of course, P uh, transmits force. We find that the, the pressure on the piston is what's pushing it out after all. Uh, so we need a uniform P as well as T. Uh, um, so we've got both mecha mechanical and thermal equilibrium. Uh, so we imagine both of these things as being uniform. Uh, uh, all the properties, in fact, uh, for our system. And uh, this is going to be our thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, which is what we're going to be focused on. Um, we're going to look at, as I said, quasi-static processes where we move this thing uh, through this series of equilibrium points. This is the idea, um, so that we don't get... Well, disturbances in the system where these things are, things are not uniform. And then, because once that happens, then we have no equilibrium uh, for those things. So this is just keeping things um, uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple uh, initially. Uh, well, not, not necessarily simple, but um, uh, we, we, we're focusing on the whole system uh, and we're not worried too much about parts of the system doing different things. I suppose that's what we're, that's what we're interested in. Uh, okay, so that's that's that, uh, and the next thing I want to do then is look at uh, at, at uh, displacement work. Two types of work I'm going to focus on uh, in on the course, and one is uh, displacement work, uh, and the other is uh, shaft work. Um, and I'm just going to put the so I'll put the formulas up for these things. Displacement. displacement work and this delta W is equal to P dB is what the what we're going to call so P is pressure dV uh, is, is a change in volume and let's imagine again our, our little system here uh, where we've got our piston again and we've got our um, and what we're what we're going to imagine then is uh, Put my piston in. And the piston has actually moved, so let's assume it was there uh, at the beginning. Um, and the system, so that I'll draw that in dash. So let, okay, let's uh, let's call that. So the piston was here initially. Um, and it's actually moved. Um, so this, let's have a by this amount. So this line has moved to there, and let's call that uh, a displacement. In mechanics, we tend to use uh, U for displacement. Uh, for In uh, thermodynamics, U tends to take the energy, but we haven't got to energy yet. So let me stick with mechanics sort of view of it. So we, we imagine a, an increment of the U of displacement 
Yes. Uh, we're imagining uh, pressure here uh, in the system, a uniform pressure. Uh, so our system is moving. So there it is initially. And we've got a uniform pressure. And we're going to imagine, although my diagram uh, seems to suggest otherwise, that uh, this uh, dis displacement then is tiny, so tiny that the pressure in the system uh, does not uh, does not does not change. Uh, this is typical of calculus, of course. Typical of course of calculus. Uh, let's give this uh, let's give this uh, this piston an area. Let's call it A. So let's, that's the area of the piston, and. Um, for us, we, we recognise, uh, well, maybe we don't, but uh, the force then, if we look at the pressure multiplied by the area, that gives a force on the piston, yes. Uh, so, uh, and we know that delta W, let's call it delta WD for displacement, uh, in mechanical terms, would be equal to force times distance travel, that is du. Yes, so in mechanical terms, uh, wherever the force is acting on the piston, um, then the work done uh, by the system would be F du. But F is equal to pressure times area. So that's what I mean by uh, yes. Uh, but the force on the system is that pressure multiplied by the area. Uh, and of course, uh, what a du is, we're going to call that dv. So that equals p uh, dv. And dv is the volume, uh, is the volume that of change in the system. So this, what, let's have a look, I'll just put it in ash there. So I've, we moved across uh, by dv, uh, du, sorry, and this thing then is uh, dv. So the displacement work, this is a, a fairly, well, we're going to use this quite often, so this is quite an important relationship. Uh, so the displacement work by a system uh, expanding by uh, an increment, uh, a differential, if you like, of volume, uh, dv, uh, is equal to p dv. So this is a quite simple formula. So delta w displacement work uh, is equal to p dv. So that's quite an important formula. Uh, now in the in the notes, I've done a more elaborate uh, analysis to get to this formula. Uh, I've also done this example, but, but um, you in the notes, of course, I've, I've also considered an arbitrary shape, uh, and uh, you can have a look at that. It's just a practice. You're know, just practicing calculus to prove that the same formula works. That the displacement work uh, uh, is equal to PDB uh, in this case. Uh, so that's a quite a nice that's quite a nice formula, and we're going to have a look at that in a second. Uh, the other one is shaft work. So let's I'm going to call that d delta uh, WS, and that is equal to uh, T uh, d theta. So this is shaft work. Uh, T is torque. Uh, so what I'm imagining there is a, a shaft coming out of the. Uh, um, uh, so let's put that. As, that's torque. Uh, so what I imagine there is a shaft coming out of a system, um, and uh, uh, and T D theta will give you give you the work uh, in that case. Again, I've done the analysis of this. It's uh, more in the in the notes, but. So let's have a little diagram here. Uh, we've got a shaft coming out of this thing. Uh, we've got our propeller system uh, and, and we've got our rotation, d theta. Well, we've got our torque uh, on the system. Uh, and, uh, and this is a standard mechanics problem that uh, delta ws is equal to t uh, d theta. So that's a, a fairly a standard thing uh, that you can you can figure out. Um, 
and you can talk is 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 it's like a force times a distance isn't it so uh, and then if you're going to force times the distance um, then you, you end up with the standard mechanical work or that distance times uh, well, the, for, it, well the distance is a radius generally so um, you end up with the same type of relationship that uh, force times uh, distance moved by that force and it ends up with this very simple formula so these are essentially the two formulas other formulas you can get for work but these are the tend to be the two uh, that we're interested in because we're interested in you know work uh, produced by expanding gases this type of thing and also by motors and and uh, turbines and these type of thing, devices where we've got rotation um, uh, being applied. Uh, so there we go. There's two. There's two increments of work uh, that uh, give fairly simple relationships. Um, and what we'd like to do then is okay. These are tiny, tiny bits of work. Um, and but quite often we're interested in you know not just the small increments but the, the total amount of work uh, which is an integration problem it's uh, to get the wd uh, you need to integrate some of all these little little increments of, of work um, and to do that we have to find a, a way to relate in pressure to to, to v uh, to integrate uh, this side we have to integrate this side um, so if I, in a sense, what I'm thinking, if I want WD, for instance, the total amount of work, then that's going to be an integral of this this uh, of this thing, uh, which is an integral of P uh, dV. And generally then between, this is a volume, of course, remember this is a change in volume, so usually between V1 and V2, uh, and quite often I'll do I'll I'll put things on like one to two, uh, just to indicate that uh, we're moving from one equilibrium state to another. So this is you know this would be the volume at one equilibrium state. This would be the volume at another equilibrium state. We're imagining uh, a quasi-static process, so things are very slow, so that p is well defined. This is this is the issue with. <laughs> this uh, quasi-static, uh, uh, while we're restricting ourselves to that, is that we want to make sure that uh, we can define our properties in our system uh, as, through, as, we move, as we move from one uh, end step to the other. Uh, well, to find out, we have, in fact, uh, uh, a formula uh, that uh, captures quite a lot of processes in thermodynamics, which is called polytropic processes. So polytropic and polytropic processes uh, satisfy a particular type of formula, uh, and this is the formula: is p v to the n is equal to a constant. P v to the n uh, is equal to constant. Uh, n typically or not usually lies between. Uh, zero at infinity, but you can find it. You can find negative values for it as well. But uh, for, for a lot of processes, we find that that is true. Um, N is called the poly polytropic index. Polytropic index. Uh, uh, sometimes the polytropic index of expansion. Or contraction, depending on whether the volume's increasing or decreasing, but polytropic index uh, is good enough. Uh, if we were well, generally for a for a closed system, uh, we'd have a constant mass in a closed system. So we imagine in our typically, you know, for the typical system I'm looking at, where you've got a pressure vessel uh, in there, then um, of course the system is closed. And we're interested in what kind of work can you get out of that system. Uh, and of course, the mass of the system is fixed. Um, so, uh, so one thing 
you can do with that as well. You can divide through this formula by m to the power of n. Uh, so if you do that, if you do, bear in mind that, uh, uh, so that m to the power of n, uh, and that will give p uh, v over m to the power of n. And we'll see that that is specific volume. So you can you can write it in terms of specific volume as well. It will be there. Uh, and that equals, because a constant. So you can write this law if you want in terms of specific volume as well as the volume. It makes no difference because mass. Okay, the constant's not the same constant. I divide it through by m to the power of m. But it's still a constant, yeah. Uh, so that is... Uh, one way to do it. Uh, now, for ty typical values of n, we find that uh, particular processes are identified. And remember my, our PV diagram, P uh, V uh, diagram. Uh, we can imagine um, uh, certain values of n uh, will have certain curves that, that will appear uh, as a consequence of different values of n. And this is where this particular relationship is quite useful because we uh, it identifies quite uh, known processes. Uh, so one of them, I would think, we start, let's start from here. Let's call this point one. Um, one of them might be uh, an isobaric process of constant pressure. Yes, isobaric process, um, uh, constant pressure. And that would that would for I would say n equal to zero, yes. So well, let's do a process. Let's call it one two. So so we go on, we go on. For, so process one two, uh, one two. This is for n equal to zero. Uh, so you stick n equal to zero on this thing. Obviously, v to the zero is just one. P equals a constant. Uh, so n equal to zero gives uh, isobaric. process. So that's one, uh, um, so that's just the horizontal line on our uh, our state diagram. Uh, the, the vertical line is the other one we could do. Uh, so let's do this, we'll call this three, shall we? Uh, so that's v equal to, v equal to a constant. Um, and that's going to occur for n, well, n equals to infinity uh, is what that one comes about as. Uh, basically because uh, if I take the power of 1 over n, yes, if I take the power of 1 over n, I can write that relationship as p uh, 1 over n v equals a constant. Yeah, call this constant c, shall we? Uh, and obviously as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, P to zero is one, yes. So, so this 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 line, if you like, is n equal to zero. This line is n equal to infinity. Uh, so one to three, then. Well, you can't set n equal to infinity. So this is a, uh, and we call this an isochoric process. So isochoric process. Constant volume process. So you might not have come across that word. So isochoric. Uh, so our polytropic processes. So these are two polytropic processes. That's what we see. An isobaric constant pressure process uh, occurs all over the place. Constant volume processes occur all over the place as well. So they're quite important processes. Um, another one is uh, of interesting one is. Uh, um, uh, n equal to 1. n equal to 1 is an interesting one. Now, why is n equal to 1 interesting? Uh, so PV equals a constant. That PV equals a constant. Uh, interesting because we, we're going to talk about ideal gases, uh, but we, we know the gas law that PV, PV equals um, uh, N, well, P, let's stop, PV equals MRT. That's, that's the gas law. So the, this is a constant MR there. Um, so, uh, so PV equal to a constant. 
Yes, for the case when n is equal to 1, uh, this is PV, and so for the gas, it would be an isothermal process. Yes, so we can imagine uh, an isothermal process, could do something like this. Um, uh, so let's call that number four. So process one to four. Uh, for an ideal gas, then, uh, isothermal process. That's a thermal process, uh, pretty important, as you can imagine. So these are really, really uh, important processes that we find all captured by this simple formula. Um, and we can see, in fact, that as n goes to, as this is n equal to 1, uh, and clearly uh, this, is, this is n greater than 1 here. Uh, basically, because n is 0 there, then we see n1 and then infinity, uh, so as n increases, the curves are coming uh, in this direction. Uh, there is another process uh, which is quite important, um, which I'll call one where n is equal to gamma. Uh, we haven't done this yet, uh, but I'll, I'll just mention it. Uh, so n equal to gamma, um, 1 to 5, let's do that then. 1 to 5 n equals to gamma um, uh, um, so gamma yeah uh, where gamma is the ratio of the heat capacities uh, which uh, we're going to talk about we're going to introduce in the course um, and usually it's greater than one um, and uh, uh, we'll find it's a constant uh, constant entropy process uh, uh, so, so what we find in that case is an isentropic, no, isentropic process. So this is constant entropy. Don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about that at this stage. Uh, I'm just, I'm just mentioning it. Uh, it's a particular type of process with this captures as well. So uh, might as well just throw it in here. Uh, when we get on to entropy, we'll, be, we'll go back and uh, look at these particular processes uh, for that particular one again uh, in that case. Uh, so, to well, these are just so these are polytropic processes, very important processes, uh, captured by a very simple formula. Uh, and with this formula, we could we could uh, we can. Um, we can work out what this integral is. So this is why we, we're introducing it at this point. Uh, so if you want to find the work given by an expansion uh, of a gas or um, of a system, then um, where we know the pressure and we follow in a polytropic process, we can uh, we can figure out how to work out this integral. So let's do that. So we got so W D then is equal to the integral between V1 and V2, uh, P dV. So that's how displacement work. And um, pressure, we're saying, follows uh, this, this, particular, this particular rule. So let's call PV, so N equal to a constant, and let's substitute that in there then. So what we've got is uh, taking the V to the other side, we're gonna add this as C, so the integral of v1 to v2 uh, c uh, dv over uh, v to the n uh, is, is, what, is what we've got uh, there. Or you can just write it as the c essentially comes outside the integral, so it doesn't have any effect. Uh, v1, v2, v to the minus n dv. Um, now to do integration, you really just have to know how to differentiate. This is the way uh, you do integration, uh, and uh, you probably know how to do this. But let's have a. I'll write it. I'll do. I'll do the differential step just to show you that that rule. Uh, but uh, so what we have to do then is figure out uh, if we differentiate something that gives me back to v to the minus n, and, you, and what we've got, of course, well, you probably know, if I differentiate um, v, uh, 
so that to the uh, minus n plus one, yes, that'll that'll do it. Minus n plus one. Uh, if I differentiate, so if I differentiate v there, uh, the value v of minus n to the plus one, then we take one off and it gives me back where I started. Uh, but of course, when I differentiate this, this comes down. So I'm going to have to, outside this thing, I'm going to have to put uh, minus n plus one, or oh, one minus n, that's a little bit right there. So uh, on the outside. So, but if I differentiate this thing, I actually get back to that. So I'm not changing anything. But of course, integration undoes differentiation. So what we end up then is c over 1 minus n um, and uh, v to the, well, put it as 1 minus n now, uh, between the limits uh, of uh, v1 and v2. Uh, so let's just put that in. So we end up with a formula that. Uh, so C, I'm going to write it like this, C V2 to the 1 minus N uh, uh, minus, I'm going to multiply by that, C V1 to the 1 minus N, all divided through by 1 minus N. So that's what we've got uh, so far, just by integration. Uh, we need to work out the C. Uh, but of course, we've got our original, our original formula here um, that we know about. Uh, so, what we can do, we can work out the C uh, from the end states. So let's have a look at that. So what I mean is, we've got PV, PV. P V to the n equal to C, that's what we've got, yes. Uh, but at the end states then, this is equal to P1 V1 to the n, of course. So since it's constant for all P and V uh, along at the end states and, and the path. And also P2, uh, P2 V1, uh, P2 V2 to the power of n. So that's, uh, that's the same thing. Uh, that must be true. So what I can substitute in, I can substitute this in here. So let's have a look at that. We've got, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to substitute in, um, I'm, on this side, I'm going to substitute in this one. And on this side, I'm going to substitute in this one, just for convenience. So I've got C, and what I'm saying C is, C is equal to P2, V2, to the power of n, that's my c, and then we've got v2 to the 1 minus n, that's what we've got, minus, and the c again, I'm going to substitute in p1, v1 to the power of n, uh, just to simplify the formula, really, this is going to simplify the formula, v1 to the n, uh, sorry, that's v2, uh, v1 to the 1 minus n, all divided through by 1 minus n at the moment, yeah, uh, and of course, you can see that when we add these indices, or when we multiply these together, the n and the minus n are just going to go, and we end up with a really quite simple formula, then P2V2 minus P1V1 over 1 minus n. Uh, so let me just write it up, bring it back up here. So the displacement work, WD, we integrate our delta... WD uh, along some path generally. Uh, this path is in our state space, this is what we're thinking of. Uh, and we, we V1, V2, uh, P, D, V, this is what we've done. Uh, and when we work this out, and I'm going to stick a little one, two on there just so that we're going from n state one to n state two. Uh, this is a classical equilibrium thermodynamics approach. We move between the end states at equilibrium, those are equilibrium points, and we found the formula P2 V2 minus P1 V1 over uh, 1 minus n. So WD displacement work from 1 to 2 is given by this 
uh, nice formula um, for all these processes. We just have different values of n, of course. Um, apart from one of the processes, in fact, it works for everything um, apart from one. And you probably can see what the one is. Uh, something, something becomes invalid at some point, and I think you see it's it's this one, um, n equal to one. Uh, we can't divide through uh, by zero. So when that happened, we we got ourselves into trouble, um, and so it happened here. Uh, so I, I was okay. I was okay uh, to this this point. Uh, but when I went to this line, I divided through by zero. Mathematically, people complain about that, so I think we probably shouldn't do that. Um, so we can't divide through by zero. So we have to do something a little bit special for n equal to one. So n, so this is true for n uh, not equal to one. So anything, if n is not equal to one, you're okay. This formula works great. Uh, let's have a look at the n equal to one case uh, then. For n equal to one, then uh, I can write, I can just follow this line. So I'm okay, I'm okay to there. So we have WD is equal to the integral from V1 to V2. C, our constant C, uh, and we've got V uh, to the minus N dV, but N is equal to one, so it's, uh, this is dV over V for this case. Um, uh, and you probably know, that the natural log kicks in when we when we do this. We have uh, again if I write it as a differential first, uh, d by dv uh, of the natural log of v. So you differentiate the natural log, then of course you get uh, one over uh, one over v, uh, and so we get this is equal to c. Uh, uh, natural log of v uh, between v1 and v2. That's what we get. The limits. Put the limits in. Uh, well, if you natural log of v, it's 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 it gives you c the natural log of v2 over v1. That's what you get for that. Uh, we put that in. C is given here, n is equal to 1, so in fact you have a choice here, you can decide for yourself what you want, but let's put them both in there. Uh, so this C in there is either going to be P2, V2, let's do that one, P2, V2, natural log of V2 over V1, but also P1, V1, natural log of V2 over V1. So this is, this is what you get. Uh, when you uh, consider the case for n equal to 1, which for our ideal gas comes up, of course, uh, we, uh, we'd be interested in ideal gases being subjected to work and so forth. Uh, it's given, it gives us an isothermal process uh, in, in that case. Uh, so what else have we got to do? Uh, that's more or less covers the, the, the work. Uh, as I mentioned, there's, uh, the only thing I should worry about, I think, is just to reinforce the sign convention uh, that's in force. Um, well, no, one other thing I, I should mention is that um, this, this business about uh, is work a property or not? Um, well, um, uh, I think you can probably see that it isn't. Certainly for displacement work, uh, we're going to find it, it isn't. Uh, so are we, are we okay? Let's get rid of this. But why, why isn't it? Can we see that? Uh, well, we, let's just imagine our process again on our PV diagram. So is, is work a property? So is work a property? Uh, well, for our displacement work, our PV diagram, so if we imagined uh, some process going from one to two, let's imagine, or going the other way, it doesn't matter. So 
uh, V expanding or V it can go both ways. So flowing this way is V increasing. So let's make that a big V. You can make a little V if you want. It doesn't make any difference for a closed system. Uh, then our work, our displacement work, you can probably guess it's the it's the area, it's a little area. Uh, so our displacement work, delta WD, is equal to PdB. So that's our displacement work. Uh, so from any process, uh, any process, um, so am I going from a state point one to state point two? Uh, I'm following this line, so this is my path. That's my path, of course. And we can see that what you get, of course, the work, the displacement work, is simply the uh, area under this graph. That's what you get when you integrate between these points. Uh, the formulas I worked out were just simply areas under the graph uh, on a PV diagram. Uh, well, if I change the diagram, so uh, this is one process, but what if I went, you know, what if I went through it like that? You know, it's possible to go on a different path. Uh, it depend on the process, of course. Uh, but clearly the area has changed. You know, and remember our definition of a property. Uh, our definition of a property uh, was that its change, it's some quantity whose change is uh, independent of the path. It only depends on the end state. So uh, we had this idea that the, uh, we had a property um, where we did the integral d phi between uh, phi 1 and phi 2. The answer had to be phi 2 minus phi 1. It, it, uh, it cannot depend uh, on the path um, for it to be a property. Uh, and clearly, I think you could agree with me, that here we have work here uh, very much dependent on the path. <laughs> it's given by the area under this curve uh, or that curve and we're going to have a, a different area under the curve. Clearly then, it's, it is dependent on the path. So this is just a demonstration that work is definitely not a property. Uh, that, that is for certain. So what is it? Well, it, as we, we, we found out, it's a transfer. It's a transfer of energy. It's a particular type of transfer. Displacement work is, uh, is one type uh, of that. We've got shaft work. There's other... other, other Types of work which I've specified in the um, in the uh, in your handbook, which you can have a look at. But these are the important ones where we are going to do uh, calculations. So, so we can conclude, I think, from this that work is most definitely not a property. Um, and this, my worry at the start of the in, of this of this uh, session, I was talking about the derivative. You can't diff work the work itself, the WD. That you work out will depend on the path. Uh, so you can you can certainly specify WD, but um, it's not a function. It's, it's not a function in the classical sense. It's, it's something that definitely depends on the contour that you use. Uh, so let's just have a look. Let's sum up then uh, on the just to look at our sign convention for both for heat. And work. So we had this diagram at the beginning, and I add that uh, in terms of heat, uh, delta Q or Q, we can, uh, but um, so if we're going from, if we have a process uh, going from one state to the next, so we can, we can define it as sort of Q one to two, if you like, this type of thing, and also W. One to two. So we've got a, our system and it's moving through uh, a process, and we can imagine our system. Uh, again, we can, uh, we've got our piston, and we've got our system there, uh, in there. And what we've got then, we can imagine that we're putting um, energy into this system. Um, so delta Q, and work is coming out of the system. Uh, positive delta W. Uh, so the convention is that uh, work done by the system, so so W um, work work done by the system 
Uh, so if energy leaves the system, work done by the system is positive. Yes, so that's the idea. So and uh, the and the surroundings in that case, uh, as far as the surroundings is concerned, it sees energy come into it. Uh, as far as work is concerned, so uh, so if we have uh, W, uh, so if we have system work done by the system. Uh, w is work. Uh, well, let's do that. Work done by the system. And this is the key word by, because we tend to use by and on, which is kind of reverses things, which is slightly confusing. Uh, and if we have work uh, for the surroundings, let's call it that. Uh, work done by the surroundings. So if we have that, what we find is that um, that W, the work done by the system, plus the work done by the surroundings, uh, must be equal to zero. Must be equal to zero. Uh, and the reason being, of course, is that if you've got work uh, coming out, I have to imagine this changing, and we've got the work coming out, W uh, surroundings, sorry, work system, uh, then of course, as far as the surroundings are concerned, uh, it, it sees the work coming inwards. So the energy transfer is leaving the system here. That is positive when it does that. Uh, and of course, and the surroundings receives that energy as we saw with the raising and lowering of a weight. Uh, so, um, uh, so we end up with the, uh, we have this equation that the, uh, that, that the net, you know, the net energy transfer leaves here, goes there, so it has to end up to zero. This is the, this is the equation uh, that we've got. Uh, as far as heat is concerned, as I remember, heat is driven by a temperature difference. We, we had the zero flow. Uh, we had the, si the situation. Uh, we had the situation of a system. Uh, system A, you may recall, and we had a. We had a diathermal wall, uh, diathermal wall, and we had system B, uh, uh, T, uh, B. Let's call it that. Uh, and then, if we, we let's assume these have a uniform temperature. Uh, now, what will happen, of course, if the temperatures are the same? Then, fair enough, everything's at thermal equilibrium. Uh, but if the temperature of B is higher than A. And what we're going to get, of course, is energy leaving the system and entering, uh, entering, uh, well, passing, leaving this one and entering this one. Uh, and as far as this one's concerned, then our convention is that we've got Q. Uh, it's positive when it Q is positive when it enters. Uh, so this one's receiving Q. Uh, uh, this one is unfortunately losing Q. Uh, and it's, uh, so this is seeing uh, uh, energy leaving the system, it's leaving it, and then Q there is negative. Here it's Q entrance, so Q is positive for that one uh, 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 again. Uh, so this is just a sign convention. But we do have, unfortunately, um, you know, uh, we have this, this word by and on. Uh, so when uh, when work done by the system is positive, then you find that work done on the system uh, is negative. Uh, so we have that scenario as well. So, <laughs> uh, but it's best to stick to it. You know, you stick to the definition of work done by the system uh, rather than flip to work done on the system. But you have to, you do have to watch for that uh, because in our, it's just the convention that we adopt uh, that. If the system's doing work, uh, then it's it's positive work. Uh, and you can think of that as machines doing work and uh, useful stuff for us uh, in that case. Okay, so uh, fairly quickly, I think I've covered all that. Uh, uh, just to mention the uh, transfers that go on very briefly for Q, admittedly, uh, but we're not gonna go into that much more deeply. You can read a little bit more about it in the, in the handbook. Uh, 
but uh, for displacement work, certainly that's an important relationship. We'll be using that formula quite a bit. So we need to get the hang of that particular one. Um, and of course, we at the moment, we're only part way there. We want to get to the first law. And I mentioned, I slightly introduced that at the beginning, which is this particular relationship. Uh, and all we've done up to now is slightly focus more on the work side of things. Basically pointing out to you that these are, these are not properties. Uh, but we're going to find out that this combination here gives me you know, a property uh, for energy. Uh, and that is going to be uh, in the next session. So I'll stop it there. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention.